A very good morning to you. Thank you so much for staying here on the AM show. Just gone by Benjamin and I guess we're discussing the fallout of that uh, NDC primaries that elected John Dramani Mahama as its flag bearer for the 2024 elections. We saw some major upsets as well, but uh, we will be bringing you more on that in subsequent bulletins. It's now time for us to discuss other matters and then... Um, this has to do with that unfortunate incident that occurred sometime last week where we lost some children due to a boot incident. We understand that uh, those victims have been laid to rest, but there are still reactions after that event. And the International Child Development Programme, in partnership with other NGOs and organizations, has expressed its condolence to the families, but is also demanding more from government in terms of building infrastructure for transportation on river bodies and also for school children. Um, Country Director Joyce Lanyo joins us here on the AM show. Good morning to you, Joyce, and thank you so much uh, for agreeing to expand those thoughts that you've captured in that press statement. So let's start on the bit of how you analyze these boat incidents that have occurred um, since the beginning of the year and your appreciation of that? Thank you very much. And uh, uh, I'm grateful for the opportunity. Uh, once again, good morning to you. And uh, I'm really, really uh, sad to talk about this issue. You know, um, for some time now, there has been a series of boat disasters in this country. Some or majority of them are affecting children with the bid to go and access education. And we find it very worrying. So we have come together to issue this statement to bring to government's attention this very tragic incident that has been happening over the period. And we are going to pick it from January to May 12. That was last, just last week. And the, the number of boat accidents that has happened, we find it as something that we need to address immediately. In fact, the issue is what did these children go to seek? They went to seek education. And we, within the education sector, have agreed to certain protocols that will support our quality education. Therefore, it is a fundamental human right for these children to demand for the education that would improve their livelihoods, families' livelihoods, uh, communities, and indeed the whole country. So if children, including adults, in the bid to transport to the other side to get education that uh, will require these developments. I mean, the necessary infrastructure should be put in place. And on this note, I want to express my sincere condolence to the families of the Fana Weja disaster and the other disasters, and to say that we commensurate with them and that we will continue to do our best to seek that government intervenes and come out with the key strategies or the key policies that will enhance the quality education that we are talking about, that will enhance the protocols that we have assigned ourselves to in terms of the UNCRC, United Nations Rights on the uh, Convention on the Rights of the Child, and any other protocol that will enhance the child survival and development. And so I have enumerated from January 24, eight pupils were confirmed dead. Now, 18th March, three, five people were killed. Then on the 27th, 11 people were also affected and they died. Then the last, but not the least, is the 9, uh, 12 May 2023. A lot more is happening that we have not uh, acknowledged or we have not heard of them. Mm. So this statement is to bring to light the issue of riverboat travels by school children, the issue 
about who is in charge of these boats. Because we are told these boats had to the extent of a, a year and a half, a, a half old child in the boat. So who was taking care of this child? Who was uh, the, the chauffeur for these canoes? And the schools, the communities within which these things happen, if there are no schools, what are the assemblies, the MMDAs, Mm. Yeah, and on that on that score on that score um i'd just like to remind viewers of um the response of the minister for education when the Sydney east incident occurred he, he did mention that there were some engagements that were going to happen after that in fact he said those the community in Sydney east where the children were moving to school from deserves a school because of the numbers and then the children that deserves a school so he said there was some form of discussion going to be had about you know communities island communities and building infrastructure he did admit at the time that at the ministry um previously there was no planning department a department that was you know auditing doing all these kind of checks and balances but um the, the one has been created and so we should expect um that some of these things will be dealt with also uh, we were told that some life jackets were provided after that particular incident in island communities in this particular one in fana for example we are told uh, by a, a local uh, authority, a local person in authority that there was or there were life jackets provided unfortunately they were not used and so and uh, that's just by way of information so uh, ma'am let's move on to what you recommend so it has been established that there are no safety protocols when it comes to transporting um, especially children who are going to school on canoes uh, we've also established that um, sometimes it's actually not necessary for these children to move out of their communities to others for schooling, according to the minister himself. So what do you recommend be done um, in terms of protection on river bodies and even providing infrastructure for these school children? Yeah, uh, I appreciate uh, what you have just said in terms of the actions that the government is taking to get uh, these uh, strategies in place, the implement so that there will be safety. But look, if you get to these places, there is no skilled officer or a, 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 a driver or a somebody that will ensure that whoever is transporting, whether school children, market women, or whatever, is going through these processes. Life jackets, the driver is well skilled and trained to carry people from one part of the river to the other side. We've had governments almost all the time coming out with some of these strategies, these knee-jerk reactions when things of this nature happen. But I bet you if it had been a son or a daughter of one of these ministers, the reaction will not be the same as we are seeing now. Sometimes you look at their reaction, it is when the accident has happened that they bring in these life jackets and whatever to prove, not more to prove that, look, they are made, taking the steps. We are demanding that immediate action is taken in terms of enforcing safety regulations on these uh, river fronts. I have taken a boat from uh, Dambai to the other side to get to Krachi. At a the point, there is no body at the riverside. So you find these canoes transporting people from one side to the other side. My sister, it's scary. I, 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 I know what I'm talking about, and I want to plead with authorities to take immediate action to build capacity and force safety regulations on these river fronts. Training, capacity building, life jackets, there should be a dedicated office at the river bank where somebody is there 24 7 mm. because sometimes the, these transportations happen in the night when there is nobody there should be this officer there constantly monitoring people who are crossing from one side to the other there should be investment in this infrastructure government should look for investment in this infrastructure 
and be, it should be available where there are no schools. Schools should be built in these communities. We have resources to do our pol uh, politics. Why not take a bit of these resources to establish makeshift schools in these communities whilst we look at the bigger picture, look calling on to donors, donor agencies to come in and support. Emergency response, do we have any strategy for emergency response at this river front? Um, we know of water-led transport company. Are they dotted around all these river fronts? Or is just a particular place? We are calling that there should be a strategy for emergency response. And like you said, if possible, children traveling from one side using the riverfront to the other side around this time should not, in my opinion, go to school. Because around this time, for example, this morning, it has rained heavily. And I am thinking that this type of rain is all around the country. Market women will be trying to uh, cross to other side. School children, in spite of these accidents, will still insist that they want to go to school. Mm. So these emergency strategies should be in place like any other place where we have uh, water transportation as our means of transport. Mm. <laughs> Sorry. There should be constant awareness creation about safety measures if you really want to board these boats. Communities, parents, MMDAs should be involved. Civil society should be involved in this awareness creation and sensitization about what steps you need to take before you mount a boat. The driver of this boat should be somebody with the knowledge, the skills, and the competency to be able to ride the boat to the safety of the other side, should be able to navigate. Because in these rivers, there are stumps of trees, or you right. never know, there will be mm. a storm. And then that creates the problem. I'm sure that was what happened at far now. Mm. So these are the, some of the strategies we have. And there should be constant monitoring. Right. Mm. And enforcement of these uh, uh, strategies that we are putting in place so that our children will be safe. Our mothers, person, will be safe, including our fathers. So that everybody, because waterfront transportation in Ghana leaves much to be desired. I appreciate you. your time here. Joyce Lanyo is country director of ICDP Ghana, and she's just been sharing uh, her thoughts with us on that unfortunate incident that occurred last week involving school children who drowned um, trying to go to school. Unfortunately, uh, what they do is to highlight the issues and make some recommendations to Ghana. ICDP <laughs> is the International Child Development Programme, and uh, the statement it released was in partnership with other organizations that are seeking the welfare of children. Still on the AM show, it's been a rainy morning here in Accra, and uh, unfortunately, some commuters are stranded. Uh, my, co my colleague Carlos Caloni joins us from 37, where we understand that some people are stranded. Hello, Carlos. What exactly is happening? What can you report? Okay, so I'm currently at the 37 bus stop right in front of the 37 hospital where I can see scores of uh, commuters here. Uh, many of them are workers uh, who are actually on their way to work. I also see school children here who, um, as part of uh, due to the rain, they, their journey has been cut short and they are under the uh, shed here at the bus stop. And in fact, on my way from, all the way from the Tetequati interchange, I could see many of the bus stops filled up with people uh, due to the rain. And so I have with me here David, who is going to tell us how long he's been here and uh, where he was actually coming from and where he's going by start here. Hi, David. Hi, bro. Yeah, you are, you are, you are live on TV. So uh, tell us, where, where were you actually coming from? I'm coming from Dakomo. And 
I am unemployed, and someone told me I should come this morning to find some job for me. And I am here more than two hours. I called to care, he said, he said, because of the rain, I should wait. So I'm still waiting. And I am confused because right now there is no job. And you're going to find a job, the person who will lead you to find a job is not coming. I don't know what to do right now. Okay, okay, so that is the eight part you're selling due to the rain. And so this is just one of the many uh, commuters who are stranded here. And in fact, the impact on their lives uh, cannot be measured. Right, Carlos. Uh, Carlos Caloni, they're c coming to us from the 37 area where some students and other commuters are stranded this morning going to school. The rains were quite heavy. Uh, we understand that it's still drizzling in parts of the city. Um, much later when we get interactive, just tell us what's happening where you are and how you are managing the rains. We'll take a quick breather when we come back. We'll bring you more to stay. <laughs> 